when you started doing it, was your primary uh, objective to make something that would change people's mind, or was your, I mean, assuming for a non-vegan audience, or was your primary objective to make something that was funny first and that, that the, the message would be secondary? I don't know which is first or... I mean, I, it just had to be funny, because otherwise the whole thing would stink. So it, it, really, uh, it really had to be very... Because the problem with everything that you ever hear is it's kind of a bit um, preachy and annoying, and there's a superiority to it. So the intention was to make something kind of self-deprecating and uh, funny enough that you didn't mind when a, 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 a new bit of information was presented. But you wouldn't mind too much when we told you that uh, male chicks get gassed or shredded. When you when you say um, <laughs> when you say that other films were preachy and annoying, and you're saying that from a vegan perspective, yeah. So even you found them preachy and annoying. Well, they're really annoying. <laughs> These <laughs> vegans. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's just really hard. I mean, there were bits that we we, we had loads of great footage of like vegan celebrities, uh, not that we found, yeah. and it was just too sincere to work in this film. There were just things that like people said that made total sense and uh, were kind of heartfelt, but just to put them in this film, you were suddenly just going, ugh, I can't listen to that person who's right. <laughs> One of the things that's nicest about the film is that you have this, the, the clip of the film within the film of Dorothy is, is still Dorothy, which you described as being a classically over-directed television documentary. And it's, what I really love about it is because it is possible to watch the film and not actually not concentrate on the way it's directed, but that particular clip is directed very well as a piece of badly over-directed television. Are you particularly proud of that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted... Uh, uh, I really wanted it to just... I wanted every conceivable stupid camera move. Like, the, 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 it pa panning past Dame yes. Eileen Atkins' face. For no reason. <laughs> For no reason, just going faster. <laughs> Could you see a lot of that? I think it's a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of, I guess, TV directors want to get into film. And so they end up doing things that are a bit show-offy and, and don't serve the thing that they're doing at the time. Well, the idea is that cinematic is missing somebody's face and overshooting. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the deal, I okay. guess. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. And when it, when it came to... <laughs> When it came to casting, I mean, there is, it is an astonishing the cast is. Yeah, it's but good, isn't it? <laughs> did, were those people uh, agreeing to it because they liked the script? Did you come to them just in, initially with an idea? So I'd like, was it because of you and your reputation? How did you get them on board? The first person who came on board actually was Joanna Lumley. Uh, Daniel, the producer, had her email address and said, just email her. And so... <laughs> This was like right at the beginning. The script was still in an early draft. I still wasn't quite... I mean, it had kind of been commissioned, but I still wasn't sure if it would actually happen. Anyway, as soon as she agreed to say, why do you keep making me ejaculate, it became quite real. <laughs> in terms of uh, people who, who we just... Uh, we hear their voices rather than see them on screen, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there is the moment in which we have the, the performance artist, psych uh, psychologist, who's judging people mentally in their head. I thought that was a superb piece of... Uh, Voice artistry, Simon. Who, who was that? That was my mum, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should stand up and take a bow. No, okay, no, just there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun day. How many of the people involved in the project, particularly those that we see on screen, are either vegan or vegetarian or had any uh, discussions with you about uh, the, the message of the, of the piece? I met one vegan at the end of this project on the last day of the edit. <laughs> 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 I couldn't believe it. Do you think of it as being science fiction? I mean, do you think of it? Do you have it in, in that genre in your head? Someone said it was a, a, a sci-fi vegan comedy, and I just thought it sounded awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's, but that's actually a very fair description. That is what it, it is. Yeah, no, that is what it is. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I think I thought it's a, it's a comedy. It's a mockumentary. I thought it's, it, it just has to be a funny documentary. Uh, and I thought the, the compassionate angle was the thing that I think was the, uh, I think that was our saving grace. We had an idea at the beginning that, uh, that it, there would be like a sort of um, war crime tribunal to <laughs> like um, putting in prison all the people in the past like Jamie Oliver. And <laughs> thankfully, um, Victoria J, iPlayer, thought that was not a good idea. And <laughs> 
And so we ended up, ended up going down this more compassionate route where we were trying to explain to the, uh, our, you know, our pretend audience of mm -hmm. 2067 why these things happened. How much, when we, we're seeing those, uh, those scenes that open and close the film, of the, you know, the, the, the blissful, compassionate society being in the park, you know, all sharing each other's company, how much is that meant to be satirical and how much do you look at that and genuinely... <laughs> Well, I, to me, that's just like a blissful utopia. But a lot of people just think it's a bit funny. And <laughs> actually, the, um, the very first shot of it is this, um, this sort of uh, thrapple, this sort of uh, three-person relationship. What, I don't know if you noticed, they were ho all holding hands. Right. And, what uh, did you call it? A thrapple. I've never heard that word before. Oh, you must get a thrapple. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so they were very far away, and I had okay. my headphones on, and we'd mic'd up one of them. And as they were walking towards the camera, I heard one of them say, this whole thing's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I think, well, I think that's the future. I think, you know, they had an, I really wanted them to have this intimacy, so I just, before we started shooting, I was... I just told them they all should be touching each other, and, and uh, I don't know if that's ethical, but uh, it was... <laughs> so when, when we came to shooting them, they could be feeding each other and sort of stroking each other and stuff. And, and did, you, did you tell them to be beatific? Did you tell them, you know, you are placid and... I mean, how much direction did you have to do with that? Well, I they, 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 came, they came beautiful, and I, I, just told, I just wanted them to feel calm in each other's presence. And I, just, I just tried to get them to uh, be quite friendly with each other. And I, I guess I was quite—I I guess I'm quite silly—and so um, I sort of clowned around a bit, so they could all just sort of relax. Because there's a sort of thing like you've got to—I think certainly at that kind of age, maybe you sort of want to feel quite cool. A lot of them were, uh, or one of them was a model, and it took a long time to get him to stop posing. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's sort of a—I want them to just sort of relax and just have a nice time. And uh, and I think that it looks like they're friends. I think. And when you see it down on the big screen, are, are you firstly are you proud of it? And what's the thing you're most proud of about it? Oh my God. Uh, I think I am proud of it, and what's the? I think that we did it. I mean, there were so many moments when I just thought, "This is what is this?" <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, it's, it was a very ambitious project. You know, with visual effects mm -hmm. on this kind of BBC budget, quite tricky. And everyone, I mean, you know, uh, to just to you know to find costumes for everyone was an incredible achievement, and. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, was, the whole thing was so impossible. There were just moments where I just thought, oh no, this is going to be a really embarrassing disaster. And uh, what do I feel proud of? Hang on, let me think. I think, oh, I like all the acting. I think what, I think it's really hard and often um, like talking, like fake talking heads, fake interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you fake like a TV show or something, it can look really wonky and you just know. And I feel like that Lorraine could have been a Lorraine show. Absolutely. I, you w it wouldn't, you know, there's a few odd bits of dialogue. Um, but um, I th it feels real to me. And it feels real when Troy is at the march or going to the food fair and it all, you know, um, and that and Freddie's uh, Freddy's, um, cooking show doesn't, you know, look, you know, we, I hired a cinematographer who'd done like loads of stuff, like everything from the very naturalistic sitcom getting on to Top Gear. So he knew how to light every different genre that I could throw at him. Uh, I love the music in it. Jeremy Wormsley did an amazing job on the music. I'm re although maybe it's that. I think it's probably the song. The music. Yeah. I think I like the song that we that we wrote together. Because yeah. that really brings me a lot of joy that we sort of, you know, that's just there now on a screen. And we, we just sort of sat <laughs> by a piano and wrote this song from the perspective of a cow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think also, and when we film that, well, it's sort of written for uh, comedy. It's sort of, I, you know, when Sam s sung it on, the, the, I think one of the last takes we did, we were sort of just doing a close up, and she actually made me like cry, and I wasn't sure if I was crying for the cow or that we'd got the shot or I don't know what. <laughs> I was just so happy, and then in the e the, uh, the the edit uh, and the, uh, the like the last day near the end of the edit when uh, we were sort of we sort of pretty much set what we were like, we were gonna mm. tweak after that, but we pretty much had it. Uh, when we watched that for the last time, I had another little tear. Oh my God, it's so pathetic, but um, <laughs> maybe no, but it's, it not, is, but it's okay. it, it is oddly, I mean, I said, this is the third time I've seen it, actually that, that song is starting to 
get under my skin <laughs> in a really bizarre way. But it, you know, because and it's also because it is a nice piece of music. It actually, the, the music works emotionally. Which, although you think, oh, this is a funny set piece, the music is telling you this isn't funny at all. This is actually very sad, and you have that kind of visceral response, which is, I'm tearing up. Why? Well, you know, yeah, it's perfectly appropriate. Yeah, Hug I did a lot of hugging with Sam Spire <laughs> after uh. that. I think in the UK it's uh, it's an exclusive iPlayer thing, so it'll just be on the iPlayer. And then uh, I don't know what happens internationally. It's sort of weird because it's it's an hour and ten minutes long, so I don't know what the deal is with uh, film festivals and that sort of thing, or I don't know. But thank you. He said that he thinks there'll be demand for it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Thank you for saying that, though. That sounds all that all sounds good to me. I think it should. Yeah, I agree. It should go around the world. Another one? <laughs> I don't know. There's a few things. There's a tour. There's a stand-up tour coming up, and uh, there's a. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Let's don't tell anyone. <laughs> there's a. I was asked to uh, put some sort of book together, which is a sort of selection of bits of my stand-up plus further thoughts and feelings. So I've got to finish that soon. And then the next thing I'd like to do is uh, a new film, which may be more of a kind of straight narrative, uh, just a basic fiction thing. A feature length film. Feature length film, fully fictional. I mean, this was fictional, but, but no archive, no, pre no pretending that it's, well, you know, just like one of the films. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when you go into the pitch meeting, that is exactly how you should sell it, you know. Well, they, they came to me. That, uh, that, so there's these two brilliant women, Janet Lee and Victoria J. Janet Lee works at BBC Arts, and she asked if I had any ideas that would be peculiar enough to work on the iPlayer exclusively. And I, I, I years ago, had a bit of stand-up uh, where I positioned myself in the future looking back at this time so I could talk about all the things that I find kind of annoying or horrific. And one of the bits was... Do you remember when people got upset when their pets died and when other animals died, they ate them? And so I thought, that, but a film would be fine. And also I had, uh, and bubbling up, I, just uh, maybe a week before Janet asked me if I had any ideas, the sketch, the Dorothy Still Dorothy sketch sort of popped into my mind. And so when she asked, I said, well, I, there's this. I don't know if this is anything. And she said, I love this. Will you write up some sort of document? And I said, OK. And then we, s we presented that to Victoria J. We had a meeting. She said, let's not have a war tribunal. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, I went about writing the uh, script. Uh, we, I think at, maybe at that point, we also had a res researcher uh, uh, and an, maybe an archive researcher as well. So lots of things kept coming in. And Daniel and I put together some sort of initial first draft script. Uh, we then sent that to Victoria J. I went away with my boyfriend, uh, and during that trip that we were on, a call s came saying, you have to make this now. Uh, I, knew, I, I knew that the pretend archive had to feel as authentic as the real archive. Because we were having real archive, I thought this authentic, you know, the pretend archive has to feel as real as that. So yes, so good cinematography and good writing were essential. And the vegan song from Albania, not real. <laughs> what I wrote was, I wrote it, as you see it, uh, hoping that there would just be a singer who just did a really long note at the end of a song. <laughs> and we found one. And then uh, Jeremy Wormsley wrote that vegan song. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so, that's what I'm most. So proud the footage of. is is Eurovision. The footage, footage is really the Eurovision Song Contest, and the, but she's actually singing. I don't know what she's singing. I never heard the real thing. <laughs> but uh, did yeah. you get, did you have any clearance problems with anything? I mean, the McDonald's stuff and anything. Did, did nobody say you can't use that? No, there's some new rule. <laughs> <laughs> how does th how does that work then, Simon? That the new rule is it just a thing? There were a lot of discussions about it. I mean, they're quite boring. Basically, there's a, there's a rule called pastiche. There's a rule called fair dealing. 
And, and, and beta is about like five different ways you can use archive without paying anyone or asking permission. Yeah. And we use them all. <laughs> yeah. Well done. <laughs> there you go. Well, the, the, the big news, ladies and gentlemen, is that Sainsbury's have brought out a, a range of vegan cheeses. So I think this uh, revolution is just happening now, whether anyone likes it or not. And, uh, you know, this is ju it's just all going to happen. Mm. I think that's why I sort of felt like, as long as it's funny, uh, you know, that's the, it just has to be funny. Because I feel like this is just happening anyway. Climate change means it has to happen. And uh, our own, for our own health, it has to happen. And ultimately, it's going to be really awkward if we keep eating other animals. People are going to just, at the moment, you can do it and it's fine, and the, o the odd person is the vegan. But at some point, I think there's going to be a shift over the next five years, maybe, when there's so much information out there. And this is mainstream. This is on the BBC. And, you know, it's, uh, this is just out there now. You can't, you can't then be putting milk in your tea without also knowing, oh, that's mm -hmm. milk from a cow whose baby was taken from her. Like, you just know that now. I'm sorry. <laughs> But luckily, there are many other milks that you can choose from. Mm. And, uh, and also, I think that's the thing. I think it's unfair to sort of, um, that may have sounded a bit much, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, as, um, I think the, the next thing is that just making things really easy. So those cheeses that have emerged, and I think at some point that um, show, the, you know, the Freddy cookery show, that just has to be a thing that exists in the world that I'm happy to executive produce and direct the first episode of if anyone wants it. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the editor, Lee, uh, after we uh, edited the bit with the cows being taken away, he, he switched to almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a very high strike rate, though. Yeah, I, can't, I don't really know. It wasn't, but that wasn't my, um, it wasn't my aim. You know, I just, I, you know, there was a lot to do. And uh, my aim wasn't to be talking about veganism the whole time. It was to, like, make sure that the thing looked real. <laughs> I guess it was a combination of expert advice and what I wanted to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, what did we do? We just had a lot of, I mean, uh, KG was sort of on, on top of all the technology and all the visual effects you see are all his. Uh, and I suppose Daniel and I spoke through the logic of various moments that could happen, laws that would change. And, uh, and yeah, what, what will happen to the cows? And we decided there would be um, retirement zones set up there was a bit that we cut out where um, uh, safaris became a booming industry and, and we had a shot of a car sort of going through lots of sheep. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, I guess we, yeah, we thought through, we, ju we just thought through it all and if it felt, um, if it felt like it could happen and, uh, and even if it was funny, then we, we went with it. Yeah, and things like, well, as soon, once you say you're in 2067 looking back, then you get things like the, you know, the last ever milk chocolate Easter egg. <laughs> and I really love those, you know, I love those moments. Uh, just, just reframe something that just seems so normal and innocent as <laughs> like a horror show in a museum. <laughs>